Hi, this is Dr. Hay with a clinical chemistry review on the um, adrenal medulla hormones. So uh, again, the adrenal medulla is um, directly connected to the sympathetic nervous system. Your adrenal glands again sit on top of your kidneys. You have two, one on top of each kidney. Uh, and the medulla is the inner zone here with the cortex being the outer zone right there. Um, the functions of the adrenal medulla is to secrete catecholamines directly into the circulation instead of uh, the transmitting the messages via the efferent axon. So um, they, they um, release epinephrine and norepinephrine, also known as adrenaline and noradrenaline. So, so these uh, hormones can also be neurotransmitters, but the adrenal medulla secretes it as hormones, um, meaning their effects last a little bit longer. Um, so these act as a first responder to stress uh, within seconds of experiencing stress stress and they promote your fight or flight response so um, they will allow you to have the energy needed to for the threat um, that's going on for your body to react and you will have the effects of uh, your increased heart rate increased breathing there's more blood flow to your muscles and stuff there's a surge of sugar released into your bloodstream and all that all that to give you energy to fight for your life basically um, the biosynthesis of these catecholamines, so um, norep norepinephrine and epinephrine, are synthesized by the conversion of phenylalanine uh, substrate, so that's tyrosine, in a tightly regulated matter. So tyrosine is, is the precursor to your catecholamines. Uh, and so you can see tyrosine here is made into dopa and then into dopamine. And dopamine is one of your happy chemicals. And then dopamine itself then is um, going to be convert into norepinephrine and epinephrine. And so um, if you're stressed all the time, you're not gonna have a lot of dopamine around because it keeps being converted to norepinephrine and epinephrine. So uh, then these catecholamines are degraded. They're not meant to uh, hang around. They're meant to have a short-term effect uh, because you shouldn't be under threat for a long time. And so uh, there are three methods of these uh, elimination of these catecholamines. Um, you can be uh, reuptake into the secretory vesicles. So uh, whatever secreted it can take them back up. Um, uptake into non-neuronal cells, mostly the liver, or degradation. There are two enzymes, COMT and MAO. Uh, they produce these uh, metabolites from the free, uh, free catecholamines, so from adrenaline, noradrenaline, or epinephrine, norepinephrine, and dopamine. The metabolites produced are metanephrine and vanillyl mandelic acid. The metabolites and the free catecholamines are filtered into the urine and excreted. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you can use urine to measure them. So you can do urine and plasma catecholamine um, measurements. And the urine catecholamines uh, sorry, are um, assayed using liquid chromatography, fluorometrics, and liquid chromatography in tandem mass spec. 24-hour um, levels are more accurate. So you usually want to get a 24-hour urine collection to get accurate levels of these. Um, causes of the sympathetic hyperactivity and therefore excess release of this epinephrine and norepinephrine uh, could be um, autonomic dysfunction. So uh, it could be that you're just stuck in sympathetic nervous system mode uh, and there's a dysfunction there. You could have panic attacks. So uh, they can be due to panic attacks and those can be tied to emotions and trauma and all kinds of things there. Same where like maybe a smell or something triggers you know uh, something in your nervous system from a previous trauma and you have a panic attack for what seems like no reason. Stress responses so um, it could be a stress response to hypoglycemia, to injury, to infection, psychosis, and seizures so that will cause increased sympathetic activity. Uh, drugs, uh, so decongestants, appetite suppressors, stimulants, bronchodilators, MAO inhibitors, thyroid hormone, and cortisol. Um, all of these drugs can cause sympathetic hyperactivity. And foods containing tyramine, so imported beer, red wine, soy sauce, overripe fermented foods, smoked or aged meats. And pheochromocytoma, which is a catecho catecholamine uh, producing tumor. 
And a little bit on that, so to feel chromocytoma, how to diagnose it, um, you want to get fractionated metanephrine and catecholamines in a 24-hour urine collection. It's the best test for the diagnosis. You uh, would also consider getting total plasma catecholamines and urine metanephrines. Um, they're the most sensitive screening profile. You can get plasma metanephrines. Uh, they're measured by high performance or liquid chromatography or radioimmunoassay. Uh, they're touted as the most specific and sensitive diagnostic test. You could get uh, urine metanephrines, uh, possibly the most sensitive urine test. Uh, you can go and get sodium chromogranin A and plasma catecholamines or clonidine suppression test or uh, obviously radiologic lo localization to, for the tumor, CT, MRI, and PET scanning to find uh, the tumor to feel chromocytoma. So how do we treat feel, uh, feel chromosotoma surgery? Following an appropriate medical preparation, removal is a high-risk procedure. Uh, the, if the removal is successful, the catecholamines should fall to normal within one week of the resection of, or the removal of, removal of that tumor. And perioperative alpha blockade is widely recommended. The outcome and prognosis patients with familial pheochromocytomas are more likely to have reoccurrences, but you have to do long term monitoring in all patients. And then the adrenal instant. Incidentalomas, so uh, incidentalomas are an adrenal mass that is typically greater than one centimeter in diameter that is found incidentally in a CT or MRI and ultrasound imaging of the abdomen. So you, they're usually not looking for it. So maybe you get a CT or MRI for something else that's going on and lo and behold, they, they find this. Um, Autopsy studies report the frequency of these adrenal adenomas at about 6% of the population, and the prevalence does increase with age. All lesions should be assessed for malignancy uh, or hypersecretion, and um, so you would, you would check for the different types of hormones again. Uh, your catecholamines and all of that. And um, surgery would be considered if the adrenal mass is cancerous. Um, any autonomously secreting cortisol, aldosterone, or catecholamines um, greater than four centimeter in diameter or growing. So that are all the, these are all the considerations for surgery: cancerous, secreting a bunch of cortisol, aldosterone, or catecholamines, or bigger than four centimeter in diameter, or it's growing and changing in sizes. And that is the last. Thank you.